Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about problem set 3 few gauge of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. If you want to know more about programming or if you want to ask about programming or the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already completed the assignment and want to have an, an, another view about the problem. We do not support plagiarism. So basically, in this problem here, we're going to implement a program that is going to prompt the user for a fraction. So we're going to ask like, here they say x uh, slash y, alright? And with this, we're going to output what is the percentage that it remains in the fuel gauge, all right? So basically in here, let's see. We are receiving the fraction cat dog, and so we're not doing anything. We're not allowing this to pass. We only accept numbers, okay? And then we receive the fraction one uh, slash four, and this represents 25%, okay? If the, the fraction is less than 1%, we're going to print the value of E, all right? Here, we're gonna output E, and if it remains more than 99 uh, percent we're going to output f of a full tank all right and then we have to handle this m these problems these errors here using try and accept that is the goal of the lecture okay so i kind of did here the the pseudocode all the steps we need to do so basically we're going to loop forever until we break at some point until we reach what we want and what we're going to do inside this loop we're going to keep asking the user for our input and we're going to try to split the input into numbers all right and we're gonna check if the this this division is less than one if it's less than one this is acceptable and then we do we translate we transform this into a, a percent and print e f or the percent otherwise if whatever the user input is not a number we can't split or if it's greater than one this means a number that is huge that is greater than a hundred percent we're not gonna allow this and this will give in the accept value error and zero division all right i already here have here the try and accept because if we see here in the hints they ask us to use it okay and i think we're ready to start so before we start let's understand how the while loop works so basically we have two ways of looping in Python, right? We already saw in the lecture that is using while or for loops, all right? So the while loop uh, is a loop that we can execute a set of statements as long as the condition is true. So as long as the condition with that we're saying right next while is true, we're going to keep in this loop. Once this condition is false, we stop the loop and we get out of the while, all right? Let's understand with this example. We are setting the variable i equal to one then we are creating a while loop remember that the while loop we can execute a set of statements as long as the condition is true in our case we're going to stay in our while loop until the value i is less than four so in the first iteration i will be one since one is less than four we're going to keep in our loop then we will print the value of i that is one and increment the value i by one next iteration i will have value two since two is less than four we're going to keep in our loop then we will print the value of i that is true and increment the value of i by one next iteration i has value three since three is less than four we're going to keep in our loop then we will print the value of i that is three and increment the value of i by one then we're going to check if the value of i is less than 4. Since the value of i is 4, our condition is not true anymore. So we don't continue in our while loop and we're done with our code. So now that we understood how while loop works, let's start implementing here. So we can give here a while and we have to say a condition that will be true. So until this condition is true, we're going to keep in our while. Once this condition is not true anymore, we're going to stop our while and get out of this, all right? So the best way of doing this is saying while true. We can use the word true and this will keep looping forever if we don't break at any point, okay? Then we need to get the user input. So how 
how can we do this? Let's understand how the input function works. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in, we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal. The user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will start Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So having this knowledge in our hands, let's apply here in our code, okay? So I'm gonna create here a variable called few and I'm gonna use the input function, okay? And what is the message I'm gonna put inside the, the to prompt for the user? I'm gonna use this, this uh, message here, fraction and colon, okay? So I'm gonna say here, fraction and colon. All right, and if we test, we're going to keep asking a lot of times, that, but we can see here if we do python fuel.py, it's going to ask us, oh, it's not going to work because we, we have some code here inside, but we, we're going to see in the future. Basically, we're asking the user and whatever the user type in, we're going to store in the variable fuel, okay? So now, before we move on with this, with this code, let's understand how trial and error and accept works, all right? So basically here, I'm using W3Schools as a really good resource if you have any question about programming, like understanding how a function works or what you, you can use in your code, okay? And basically, the try block lets you test a block of code for errors and the accept block lets you handle the error, okay? Let's see this example. For for example, let's suppose we have this code try print x except we're gonna print an exception occurred. The try block will generate an exception because x is not defined. Then we're going to print an exception occurred. Let's see another example. In this code, we will try to print the division of 10 by 0, but we know from math that we can't have any division by 0. Then our code will go to accept and we will print an exception occurred. So basically what happens here in the try and accept? Every line of code we're going to write inside of our try block we're going to do and if we don't have any error we're going to skip the accept all right and we're done with our code but if one of these lines in our try block does not work for some reason if we have an error the accept will handle this error and we're going to do what is inside the accept uh, block all right in this case i'm just saying pass because i want to loop again the pass means that we're going to do a loop again all right this is what we're gonna do now that we have here in our hands let's start applying the these lines of code that we have to do in here. So the first thing we're going to try to split the fuel in two because we want to get the number, right? We're going to receive here one number is slash the other. So we're going to split here some way where we're going to get the, the number one, for example, and then the number four. So to do this, let's understand the split method. The split method splits a string into a list. You can specify the separator and the default separator is any white space. Let's suppose we want to split our string txt, which holds the value high everyone into two. We can use the notation of creating two variables in the same line by doing x comma y. Then we assign x and y to the result of the split method. So we do x comma y equals to txt dot split parentheses. In this case, the split method will separate the string in where there is white space. In the end, x will hold the value high and y will hold the value every one. Let's see another case. Let's suppose our txt variable holds the value apple comma banana. In this case, we use the split method again here, but instead of doing txt dot split Split, we do txt dot split and inside the parentheses we're gonna use quotation mark comma so in this case we want to separate our string by comma this means that we're going to split this string every time we have a comma in the end x will hold the value apple and y will hold the value banana well so the split method works here perfectly right because we can use the split and the thing that we're gonna use to split is the forward slash okay so I'm gonna put here I'm gonna create two variables that will be the numerator, numerator and the denominator and these two variables will be stored uh, in these two variables we're gonna start the result of the split method so we're gonna say fuel all right the variable that is holding the, the input dot split 
and what will be the thing that we're going to use to split is the forward slash okay so for example in this case we would have in the numerator the number one and in the number in the denominator the number four okay but this is this that we're going to receive it's not a number for real we're going to receive as a string so we have to convert this string into an integer okay so what we can do we can create a new variable called new numerator for example and we can do uh, we can convert this into an int doing the following we use int and inside the parentheses the variable we 